Hey there, welcome to Synth Seeker. My name is Luke. So, Berlin School, an uncomplicated approach. We're going to talk about Berlin School, okay, is a particularly favorite sort of uh, genre is the wrong word. Berlin, Berlin School is not really a genre. Berlin School is a, is a collection of techniques and approaches to making uh, music. And it doesn't even have to be like synthesizer based. You can, you know, a lot of things that can be called Berlin school are made with bass and guitar and drums and, you know, maybe some effects. But um, if you spend any time on the channel for Synth Seeker, <laughs> you know that I like synthesizers and I like Berlin school and prog rock and synth wave. And, uh, and so this is my approach. This is the simplest approach. Um, that I can distill down into just a few steps to try and give anyone who wants to try to make something that sounds similar or like Berlin School, uh, like a recipe, like give this a try uh, and see how it goes for you. If you go look back at the old Synth Seeker videos over time, over the last five years, there's lots of videos, you know, Intro to Berlin School, Ber Berlin School Basics, Berlin School Essentials, things like that. Those are all good videos. Uh, I'm taking what's in some of those and I'm distilling it down into like seven steps that I can literally fit on a little tiny business card and hand out to people at the New England Synth, uh, Synth Fest this weekend. <laughs> so in this video is an expansion of those steps. Now, what we're going to do is before we start talking about the steps you have to do, there's two skills I need you to have. Skill one is you need to learn how to make a Berlin school style pluck sound on a synthesizer. Uh, and I will cover that very briefly, but there are other videos I'll link in the description to how to make Berlin School sound designs, how to do plucks and things like that. Or you can just search, you know, YouTube or the internet for how do I make synth plucks? There's a bazillion videos out there, but I'm just going to cover it super fast here because you need to be able to make a pluck. Um, the second skill I want you to learn is for this, you need to understand what a scale is because we want you to pick a scale and then only use the notes from that scale in the patterns and notes, patterns of notes you're going to be making. Okay. We're going to be talking about that in a second. Okay. Now, if you know music theory, great. If you know about scales, great. If you don't know about scales and you're, and, and maybe it's intimidating or maybe you just don't give a crap and you're like, I don't, I don't want to learn scales. That's okay. For this exercise, I want you to use a scale. And all that means is, if you go over to hooktheory.com slash cheat sheet, okay, follow that link, link in the description, you can get a list of all of the scales and modes in sort of the majority of Western style music, okay? And for this exercise, we're going to use the C minor scale. So find in the minor column, C minor click on that. This website, uh, this is not a sponsored video. I have, I don't have sponsors and things like that. I'm not even monetized, right? Um, this is hook theory. It's a, like a music encyclopedia and they also sell services. Like they'll sell you tools for writing music and stuff like that. But the, the cheat sheets are a free resource. It's like going to the encyclopedia. So you can look at the C minor cheat sheet and it'll tell you, these are the notes on your piano that are in C minor. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to make some patterns and you can make patterns in, I'm going to do it in Ableton, but you can do it, uh, you know, in whatever DAW you use, or you can use, if you use a hardware sequencer, most hardware sequencers will allow you to put in a scale and you would put in C minor. And if they don't, you're just going to only use the notes listed here. So C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and then C again. And you can use any of them in any octave, right? And we're not limited to just one octave. But those are the notes we're going to use today. And when I show them to you in Ableton, I'm going to constrain the, the view so it only shows those notes, okay? But that's the goal. Now, in the future, when you're working, when you're trying this out, you can use different scales. And in the you know future after that, after maybe you're comfortable with scales, you can try weird scales or make your own or throw them away or use two different scales at the same time. Like you can the, basically with music theory, as soon as you understand a chunk of it, you can break those rules. As soon as you start to know the rules, you can start breaking them. Right. And I think you can just break them right off the bat. But anyway, that's a different debate. Um, but here's a reference. OK, so we're going to use the C minor scale and you're going to use these notes. Let's talk about skill one here. I need you to learn how to make a Berlin school pluck. All right. 
So I've got a drift synthesizer here. You can use whatever synth you want, VSTs, whatever hardware. It, it really doesn't matter. When you are uh, setting up your synth, when you initialize the synth, when you get a default sound on it, it's generally going to sound something where when you're pressing a key, it keeps playing until you let go of the key. All right. Uh, and what you want to do in the filters, usually all the way open, right? And so to make a pluck, what you generally want to do is go to the envelope for your filter and you're going to take the sustain all the way down. You hear that clicking? You may not hear that. It's just clicking. It's because the, uh, the attack and decay are going through super fast and there's no sustain. All right. And then we're going to start bringing up our decay. Right? It doesn't sound great, but it's basically the shape we want. It's a pluck. It has a fast attack, and then it fades out. All right? And you can uh, increase the attack a little bit. Like if you, as you increase the attack, it gets a little sort of moi. Sort of softens it. It's not quite a pluck, but it's up to you. You can use that sound if you want. I'm going to keep it a little on the short side. All right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my filter down. Okay, so now I can't hear it at all, but I'm pressing the key repeatedly, and I'm going to bring up what's the amount that my filter is affected by my envelope. All right. It's not a staggering, amazing sound, but Berlin School, you know, is an old, derived from, from ancient times sort of mode of music making, right? Right. They didn't have crazy wavetable synths. Eventually they did, but at the beginning, right? We've just got this little pluck. Now we can take that pluck. I think that's good enough. And we're going to apply some delay to it. Literally an echo. And we're going to put a big old reverb on it. Once you've got some delay and reverb on there, you can play with your settings on your synth. Maybe, maybe up the decay a little bit. That's okay. Maybe add a little resonance to the filter. Get a little chirp in there. All right. And then as far as your delay is concerned, you can set your delay time to be whatever you want, right? Once we start in building our patterns, you can go change the delay around and see what you like the sound of. And you can add as much or as little reverb as you want as well. Okay. But that's how you build a pluck. All right. Now that I've made that pluck, <laughs> I'm not going to use it anymore. I'm going to use a few other plucks. I've got this pluck. All right. So that's a sawtooth wave that starts with a pluck, but it's also got sort of a slow attack. So you get this moi sort of brassy sound. Right? And then I'm going to use this pluck. Just a different sound. And so I'm, I'm going to use two sort of sounds to start making my Berlin school. Okay. Two plucks that have different sounds. Now a pluck, you can use a pluck for everything. If you pitch it way down, you can make a bass and it just happens to be based on a pluck. You can do pitch it up and do the same thing with a lead right? Uh, you can have plucks be a lead. That'll work too. Or you can just go to your synth and if it's got presets, go through your preset library and find something labeled pluck, <laughs> right? Find a couple plucks you like the sound of. Don't stress about it. Literally a single oscillator, like a square wave or a pure uh, sawtooth with a little filtering is going to work for what we're doing here. Do not agonize over your sound design when you're making Berlin School, okay? You can always change that stuff later. All right. Now that is our two skills. Learn to make a pluck. Okay. And I encourage you if you're, if you uh, are at some future New England synth fest, come to the petting zoo, make a few plucks there. Okay. And then you pick a scale and use it. We're going to use C minor. And I should give you a reference for how to go find out the notes in any given scale. You can go use hook theory as a reference, right? Or Wikipedia, whatever. Now, 
<sighs> Next, here are the actual steps. This is an uncomplicated approach, and I'm just going to walk you through these steps. I'm not going to explain theory or any, you know, why we're doing it this way. This is literally a recipe, a cookbook, okay? So follow me, all right? So step one, we're going to be making a voice, okay? Berlin School uses layers of voices. A voice is a synthesizer, usually a pluck in this example. It can be other things, but for this example, a voice is a layer with a synthesizer playing a small pattern over and over and over again. And it's got some delay and some reverb on it to give it that sort of spacey feel. Okay, and we're gonna build this up over time. So let's go make a voice. So step one, make a simple repeating pattern starting with the root. What's the root? In your scale, the root note is the first note in the list of notes. So for C minor, our root is C, all right? So I've already built a little pattern here. You can do this in a sequencer in your DAW. If you've got a step sequencer in your synth, you can do this. Or if you have an arpeggiator in your synth, you can do this by holding down the root note and one or two more other notes in the scale, and it will make a pattern that starts with the root note. All right, so let's look at this. This is the pattern I have here. Now this is our, all of the notes we're seeing here are the C minor scale, right? So C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, back to C, and it just repeats, all right? So now. That's C minor, okay? It's a little dark, a little sad, right? It works good for space, space music. All right, now I've got a pattern here. It's four beats long. One, two, three, four. There's 16 steps, right, that I can be dropping notes in. You can, you can drop notes on the in-between steps or things like that. If you're familiar with drum machines or step sequencers, the 16 step pattern for a loop or a pattern or a clip is very common, okay? And what we're gonna do is I've made a very simple pattern that starts on our root note C, and then it plays a G, and then it plays a C again, and then there's some space, and then C, and then an E flat. So if I start this playing, Right? So it's a simple pattern. A few notes, all in C minor. I've got some delay and some reverb, adding a sort of spacey texture to this. All right. All right, so let's go look at our list here. So that was step one. Make a simple repeating pattern starting with the root. We did that. All right. Step two for making a voice. Put gaps in your pattern. Fewer notes is better, right? Now it's a step, this is one of the rules of the recipe, and later you can break this rule, put in as many notes as you want. But we've already got some gaps here, right? You don't need to have a note on every step in the sequence. Just because we support 16 step patterns doesn't mean you have to use all 16. And in the case of Berlin School, for this approach, you wanna have some empty space in there because that's where other voices will be singing later, all right? So we've done that. We've made a voice, congratulations. Make a simple repeating pattern starting with the root and then put some gaps in it. Fewer notes is better. That's a voice, all right? So we've done that, congratulations. All right, so let's rinse and repeat that, okay? That's when we make a voice. The next section says combine voices to make a bed. And step three is layer your voices. So we need to make another voice, okay? So we'll go back, and so I've used this synth. Let's make a voice out of this synth. Okay, so I've made another pattern. Okay, here we are. This one is a longer length. Instead of being just four beats long, this one is eight beats long, and that's okay. You can make them as long or short as you want, but Smaller is better. One bar, two bars. It's just going to, um, as you start out making Berlin School, start with smaller patterns, okay? 
it will allow you to sort of wrap your head around how these voices are going to work together. All right. So we've got this first voice with our simple notes. We pick some notes, started on C. We've got some gaps in here. Now this pattern, I'll play it for you. All right. Now you'll note that this also uses the notes in the C minor scale. And we've got some gaps in it. And it's starting on our root, which is C. But it doesn't actually start at the beginning of the pattern. We've got some we've got a gap at the beginning, and that's okay. Alright? So we've got a gap at the beginning, we've got a gap here, and a little gap at the end. That's fine. Now, our recipe here says layer those voices. So let's play them both at the same time. All right, so we'll play this one, and then we'll play this one, and we'll play them on top of each other. Here we go. Not bad. All right, it's getting there, it's getting there. We've got two distinct voices. They have different sounds, so our two plucks we've made are different sounding plucks. Can you use the same pluck twice? Sure, you can use the same sound twice or as many times as you want. But in this case, I like having two distinct different voices, like two different people singing, all right? So there's our layered two voices. That's this clip and this clip playing on top of each other. Now, if you were doing this with hardware, you'd need two synths, right? Or two sequencers talking to the same synth and maybe that synth is multi-timbral or not, right? If you've got mono synths, maybe you're using a, like a modular, right? You'll need two voices in that modular and then two sequencers or a sequencer with two tracks or two lanes, all right, for controlling two different rows of notes. But here's our layer. Let's go back to our recipe again. The next step of our recipe says layer your voices and then use different pattern lengths at the same time, okay? Well, we are, we're using this pattern. One sec. This one is four beats long, and this one is eight beats long, and that's fine, okay? So what happens is this one plays twice for every time this one plays once. But what we're gonna do is, these are even numbered patterns. This one's four beats long, this one's eight beats long. We're gonna screw with things. We're gonna take this eight beat long one, and we're gonna shorten it so it's only seven beats long, okay? Now what's gonna happen is when we play these on top of each other, we're gonna get this new pattern, all right? So the orange notes is our four beat pattern. It's gonna play, you could sort of see it, here it is, these five notes, one, two, three, four, five. And here it is playing again, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right? These are these patterns. One, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. So it's playing through. Now our, this pattern, this one, this one is now only seven beats long. And so what's happening is it's restarting before the orange one is. And we're getting this sort of generation of a much more complex pattern using these two really simple patterns. All right, so we've got this one playing, which is four beats long, on top of this one that we've shortened to seven beats. And this is what it sounds like. We call that a bed, a Berlin school bed, all right? So we've taken our voice, we've made two of these voices, and we've combined those voices to make a bed, which is layered voices, and optionally, and we chose to do this, we made the patterns two different lengths. One's four beats long and the other's seven beats long. And if you mix even and odd lengths together, you get very interesting sort of convoluted patterns that get generated. So give that a try. Now. We've got this bed, right? It sort of implies a sort of harmonic place. It's in C minor. It's got this definite sort of dark, spacey mood to it. So what do we do next? Well, now 
we're going to go put melodies over the bed. And that creates what we call a form. So like a chorus is uh, a Berlin school bed and then a melody and a bass line over it, right? So you put some melodies over it. You can play lead. So step five, play lead and bass melodies over the pattern. So you may be saying bass melodies. I understand lead melodies. What's a bass melody? A bass, bass is really just a very low melody. Okay. It could be, and maybe it's not the fastest like flurry of notes in the sense that like a, a, a synthesizer lead solo is, you know, with a million flurry of notes playing. Um, but a bass line plays a melody just as powerful, sometimes more powerful than the high pitch leads. So let me show you. So we have these patterns. We have this bed playing. We have this clip here. This is our bass line that I've created. This also uses the notes in C minor. It also starts on C, our root, and it's gonna play a rhythmic bass pattern. And then it changes from C, it changes to A flat, and then changes to F. So it's playing a very sort of simple but low melody. It's gonna go C, A flat, A, F. And it's gonna play that over top of our bed. Let's listen to it. You see how that bass line's playing a melody? So our pattern is staying the same, and it's it's basically got a Berlin School bed in C minor playing, and our bass line's playing a melody over top of it. Now I'm gonna put in a kick drum just to give us sort of a heartbeat so we understand what we're hearing here. So because our because our bed is a mix of a four-beat piece, a four-beat pattern and a seven-beat pattern, we can lose track of where the downbeats are. So if we drop a kick on it, it becomes a little more obvious. So go back to our recipe. So we're putting melodies over this. So we put a bass melody over top of our bed. Let's go put a regular lead melody over top of that. All right. So I've got this lead sound over here. Now, in this case, I just went and grabbed a preset. I could have used a pluck for this, but I went and said, oh, let's go get a preset lead. I'm looking for this sort of Jean-Michel Jarre kind of feel, old Berlin school or electronic music from the 70s, sort of uh, Selena synth, uh, string synth sort of sound. So I just grabbed a preset and that's what I'm using. And I've made a clip where I recorded a simple melody over it. This melody is also using C minor. It's only using the notes from the C minor scale. And you're pretty safe to use whatever you like. And you just listen to it as you're drawing your melody or playing your melody on your synth or whatever mechanism you're using to play your melody, your high melody or your bass melody over this. Uh, and let me show you what it ends up sounding like. So if we go here, select all of this bric-a-brac. All right. So here, the orange and blue is our Berlin School plucks that are our bed. The green is our baseline melody. It's a bass melody. And then the sort of uh, magenta here is our string melody. And let's see what it sounds like. And then 
last little touch here. So we've made our voices. We've built a bed out of combining a couple voices and you can combine as many as you want. You don't really only have to use one if you, if you choose, but I like to combine a couple. We put our melodies over that, our lead and our bass melodies, and uh, we've got a little rhythm over that. Now, there's a little optional advanced step. When you're deciding what melodies are gonna play over this, um, the note that the lead plays combined with the note that the bass plays combined with the notes in the pattern at any given moment are gonna form a chord, and the chord is sort of like, um, it ref the chord has a mood within the key. It has a sort of job that it does. It either adds tension or it relieves tension in the piece of music. Um, and wherever you are at any given time, it's called the tonal center. That's a little overkill, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to get there. But what happens is once you've made this pattern, right, once you've done this, you can rinse and repeat and do it again and use a different bed and a different melody and a different bass melody, right? Um, and by changing what notes you've selected in the bed, what notes are playing in the bed, and what notes you choose for your bass and lead melodies, you can shift the sort of emotional state of your piece around. So you can have an A part that's uh, you know dark and spacey, and then a B part that's even darker or something that ends up getting lighter and a little happier, right? You can move that around, and it, there's that's an advanced maneuver. I'm not going to cover it here, right? But um, there are other videos about it, um, and you know we can explore that later. But anyway, so we've got a bed, we've got two melodies, we've got a little bit of a rhythm, um, and what you can do is rinse and repeat and swap out different patterns over time to build out your song, and then. Uh, you can add space noises. So <laughs> go grab some samples from NASA or something like that, which I've done here, and, uh, and we can just get it going. So let's just listen to this one last time. And we'll throw in a few samples from NASA. Discovery Houston, 20 seconds to LOS Tedris. Roger, nice to be in orbit. Discovery 4 computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. Discovery Roger, go for deploy. Move to Discovery Head Reach. Anyway, so we, you could take that as long as you want. Turn the lights down, turn on the LEDs, you know, fire up whatever you're chemical refreshment is for this week uh, and play around with that, right? Um, and so that is an uncomplicated approach to Berlin School style music. This is just one way to do it. It's not a, like a definitive way. It's not a set of rules. If you make Berlin School in some other method, that, this, that doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong by skipping all of this stuff. That's fine. Uh, this is just a distillation of some of the approaches I use uh, and I wanted to try and make it as simple as possible. And if I see you at the New England Synthesizer Festival, you might have, I'm giving out this set of instructions on a business card because <laughs> it should fit on a business card. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see where it goes, okay? So I hope this was useful. Uh, and if you're here because you were at New England Synth Fest and you followed the link on that business card, hey, thanks for showing up. Uh, feel free to dig around on all the other videos for more Berlin School stuff or just general synthesizer nerdery. Um, and uh, if you're someone who's arriving at YouTube in the future, uh, welcome. Uh, hope to see you around and uh, have fun. And if you make music, if you make Berlin School or any kind of synthesizer-oriented music, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Contact me through whatever channel you feel like. Uh, and uh, as always, have fun, and thanks for hanging with me here at Sin Seeker. Have a great day.